The same people I speak against, I be telling y'all the oppressors. They killed Duck because he spoke out on the fine shit before it even happened. That went over niggas' heads, though. He said in the song, they tried to warn me, I just can't keep quiet. Told his ass, y'all want to see a dead body? Told his ass, basically, he just signed you over to the Illuminati. He told him that. Okay? I ain't got to keep reading Lil Reesey shit. It's just going to be talking about shootings and shit that don't matter. Lil Reesey, Chief Keef, Lil Dirt, these rappers that come out of that, that came out of my city, that crossed through that door, and they just, they know different than other rappers in other cities that crossed through that door, man. Them boys sold out, man. Chief Keef sold out in the beginning. Guess how, what was his deal? Six million. Y'all forgot the number on Chief Keef deal too, huh? Six million. And the only reason they didn't, the only reason Keith ain't keep, they didn't keep fucking with Keith is because he just was too slow. He was too dumb. They couldn't even teach him, they couldn't even get a PR to teach him how to talk in the interview. Like, damn, this nigga too dumb, but we already blew him up, though. They're like, fuck it, well, just sit back and be quiet, don't say nothing. You say something, though, we gonna get on your ass. So Chief, he just sit back, make his little money, don't say nothing. Y'all laughing, I'm telling y'all facts. Lil Reese role in this shit was this. We gonna blow you up 2013. We gonna keep you locally. We gonna keep a bunch of cases on you, make it look real good, all that. We gonna make your street rep look like you really one of them dudes. And we gonna keep money in your pocket. So even though Reese ain't never put out no albums, you know what I'm saying? He kissed street cred step, kept building, but he wasn't doing shit, so how was it building? He wasn't stepping the way they was presenting that shit to people and shit. So that's why when he when he was getting his ass beat and shit like that on the internet and shit like that was happening and motherfuckers clowning him on the internet, I ain't never clowned them. I just know it's because the he didn't he fucking with them people and they didn't create a storyline for him. They create just like an NBA 2K when you create your player and they ask you to you gotta create a storyline. They create this whole storyline for niggas, man. Because they needed Chicago to be the epic center of violence so that they could bring the National Guard in. So what they did was they used some little young ass boys from Chicago Say hey we gonna pick y'all out We gonna blow y'all up And we gonna put y'all through this dope And we gonna make y'all music Because they know the music is the motivator The music is the motivator nigga I'm getting, giving y'all how deep the game go The music is the motivator Dirk sold out in the beginning Reese, Keith, them niggas sold out You feel me in the beginning Feel me? King Von never sold out. Remember, Von never re even got to that level. He was signed to dirt. You know, he was signed to another nigga. He, he ain't in the meetings with the big boys. That's what y'all don't know. Meanwhile, I know the music business. I just sat down on my own with a label a couple years ago. Since I know how that game go. Von didn't sell out. Von was authentic. Real street nigga. And I told y'all I was locked up with Von and I seen him then fold. We came in in the bullpen and folks ain't fold. You see what I'm saying? And when he got out after me, he beat his case after I beat my case. I beat my case in 2015. You see what I'm saying? You can look up my record so you're going to see we was in jail at the same time. I was the building coordinator for the Gangster Disciples. I had the whole division, I whole division 10. Go pull my pro, go pull my records, nigga. You're going to see I kept getting kicked out division, division. Because we fighting, we sitting that bitch up, we... Nigga getting caught, we, we in there living the life. I thought I wasn't getting out. I thought I wasn't never going to come home. I had five witnesses testifying against me that I shot a motherfucking damn and killed them in broad daylight. Even though it was self-defense, I just, after so many years in jail and them offering me 35 plus years, I'm like, shit, I ain't never gonna get out. Fuck it, I accepted the life. So what I'm saying is you can go pull my records and see when I, I get stabbed all up in the face. I got stabbed all up in the face. Even this, this shit come from surgery. That's surgery, nigga. All in my head, all in my arms and in my back. All of my we was in that warrant. So I'm not saying that from no broad, from no, from no motherfucking, um, from no motherfucking, um, promoting this standpoint. I won't want none of y'all to go through that. That's why, I, that's why I'm talking like I'm talking now, nigga. That's why I talk like I talk now, nigga. I really live this shit, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, you look, I'm one of them dudes for real. When I was in there in the jail and in that bitch and any nigga in there with me will tell you that. Period. So I know the King Von was a hundred. So when he got out, I'm like, oh, that, I remember Shorty. That Shorty that was in the bullpen and didn't fold when we came in. That's what I first said when I seen him. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, I remember Shorty. You know what I'm saying? On the real. 
So now at the end of the day, he ain't never sell out. That's why Dirk had to get him out the way. He was a sacrifice. 